her, baby. He never showed me how to visit a message, so this is the only way I knew how. Eight years ago, God gave me an angel. And the angel being with me happened to be easy. And we tied all up some dance. Well, I want you to know how much I love you. I must appreciate everything you've done for me over this last year. Things like this hit and go to my skill. I love you so much. Now, never want you to think of this that. Coming up on Chaos and Kindness. The story that I received here is about a man named Reggie. Reggie was diagnosed with throat cancer. They took his whole tongue out. He will never eat or talk again. He won't be able to tell me he loves me. How long did you sing for? Your whole life? He sings to me all the time. Let the cross will not get heavy. He can tell his story and he can help other people. You guys coming here can help get my message out of love and survival. You know what I'm gonna do? I got an idea. I will tell your story to our fans and the song that you played for me that you wrote. I'll play this song and have the whole place stand up and I'll send you a video of everybody dancing to your song. Reggie, this one's for you. I promised you I'll do this. My name is Justin and this is Ryan and he's my right hand man and my sidekick. And we're in a band, the kind of band that has performed thousands of shows all over the world, including 3,000 shows on the Las Vegas Strip. Now we turn our attention to doing good in the world, spreading our love, and inspiring others. So, welcome to our world of chaos and kindness. You were late. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're ready? All right, so we've been trying to find stories um, in South Carolina, things that we can do to help people. And the whole time we've been going through emails and things like that, Jimmy has just been asking us the entire time if he can sing for strangers. That's what he wants to do for kindness. You love singing. Yes. And so who do you think you want to sing for? Strangers. Just anybody. Random. But why do you think, what do you think that'll do for them? Make them feel better. Make them have a good day? Yes. All right, give me a nice note. Ah, 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 ah. You ready? Yeah! <laughs> and I will find somebody to sing. Warming up the voices, yes. Vocal cord, no! I'm Jimmy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Hannah. I'm Katie. Do you like songs? Yes, yes, love songs. All right. Shake it for me, girl. Shake it for me, girl. I love it. Shake it for me. <laughs> I love it. Good job. The cookie man. The cookie man can. There you go. I want candy. Dance, 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 dance. I'm walking. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give me some, give me some jazz or something, some blues or something. Rolling, 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 rolling. Watch you rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah. I was just singing to the guy. Don't take him away. Don't take him away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Did you like it? How do you think things are going so far? Great! Are people liking your voice or what? Yes! You sang to a uh, statue? Yeah! You what? It was a statue! If I was the king of the forest... It was a statue! What'd you think it was? What? But a rook! But a rook! Oh my god, a statue! Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I'm all shook up. Uh, yeah! Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Wake me up before you go, go. So let me hear hanging like a yo yo. I'm singing you a song so you have a good day. 
It's gonna be a brighter day. <laughs> Greenville, North Carolina! Oh. Right. Greensville, South Carolina! That's right! So today we had a good time singing for people. Jimmy's still going. He's, uh, he's been singing all day. I think we made some people smile, and that was the goal today. Jimmy! Making people laughing and We're singing. Done. We're finished. It's over. Good job. Yay! That's a wrap. Singing. Yeah! Say, so that's a wrap, guys. That's a wrap, guys! We go visit Reggie. Yeah. See if we can make Reggie a little happy today. Yeah. Reggie's a singer, bud. Yeah, I love to sing too. Over the last 24 hours, we've received over 100 emails in South Carolina for people that we could help tell their stories or do something kind for them. The story that I received here um, is about a man named Reggie. Reggie was diagnosed with throat cancer. After chemo, radiation, several surgeries to reconstruct the inside of his mouth, he will never eat or talk again. I cannot imagine the lifestyle change and saw you on TV and thought an act of kindness might be something that he will never forget and could certainly use. God bless all that you do. Well, we've got a hold of Reggie's family. We're outside of his home right now. He has no idea we're coming today. We figured we'd go inside, surprise him, learn his story and see if there's any way that we can make his life a little bit happier. Reggie, I'm Justin. How are you, man? Coming up after the break. I love you so much. He won't be able to tell me he loves me. How long did you sing for? Your whole life? He sings to me all the time. I got an idea. Reggie, this one's for you. I promised you I would do this. So obviously Reggie's unable to communicate talking, right? So yes. um, what's the best way to communicate, Reggie? Um, well, I read At this point, <laughs> Kim. <laughs> I read she this. You just blink, just blink in Morse code and we'll yeah. go to Kim. Yeah, well, we have this thing every night, you know, when I say I love you, he, he does three times, you know, to my hand. One, two, three. That means he loves me. What happens if it's two? Uh, it better not. Almost. Oh, no, Reggie. <laughs> that means he's mad or something, you know? <laughs> so, you know, we, we got an email saying that, uh-oh, oh, we got something for Jimmy? He's the kindest person and will give you any uh, shirt. Oh, check this thing out, dude. Well, hi, bud. That's so Thank nice. You. Now, you, now you got the American flag right there with you all the time. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we play drums and uh, you're, you're a musician. He sings. 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 Yeah, that, that's a musician. That's a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sing. Um, how long did you sing for? A long time? Yeah. Is that what you miss most? singing so the story that we heard and it'd be easy for Kim to share with us um, is you end up having throat cancer right throat cancer and um, you want to go from there and tell us kind of the story yeah um, on June the 30th of last year he um, had been having problems and we went to an ENT we thought we were going in maybe for tonsils and that kind of thing but they ended up telling us that he had a very large tumor in his throat and that it was almost blocking his airway. So um, we went and had you know all the tests run and then finally went to the surgeon and he said, well, we need to do a biopsy. We're gonna have to put a trach, do a tracheotomy. When he had his surgery um, June the 28th of this year, um, they took his whole tongue out he ended up having to have this surgery because the chemo and stuff didn't work. His tongue started swelling in February of this year and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was like three sizes, the size of your tongue. So we had to go through this extensive, life-changing surgery. He can't breathe through his nose or his mouth he can't smell, which, you know, I was like, oh, this is this is great. He can't smell my perfume anymore, you know? So total in that time frame, we were there for 31 days in the hospital. 
We told the doctor we want to go home, you know. We went home August the 4th, and on August the 15th, we went back into the office with the surgeon, and he looked in his mouth, and there was new tissue growing inside his mouth. So um, we just couldn't believe it. We knew that it was only God that did that because man couldn't do it. They had to do it by surgically putting something there, but this was new tissue filling in. This is a cancer though, and a lot of people, and what we want to try to do is educate people and let them know that this can happen to anybody. Reggie never smoked and he didn't drink. So everybody thinks, oh, throat cancer, they smoke, you know, they drink. Well, he didn't. He had the HPV virus, which a lot of people have that can be dormant. So on October the 4th, we go for our PET scan. And that will be the tell all, tell all, because we know that God has his hand in this and that it's gonna come back normal and there's not gonna be any cancer in his body. And that's what we believe and we trust in God. And that's the only thing that's gotten us through this terrible almost year and a half that we went through this. It has been so hard for him. He has struggled to think that you had this massive surgery and you will never be able to talk and how much he loved to sing. He won't be able to eat again. I feel guilty for eating and he can't. He won't be able to tell me he loves me in that sense of speaking it to me. He sings to me all the time. So now he just moves his mouth with the words and it makes me just as happy. Coming up after the break. He wrote a song in April. I got an idea. Reggie, this one's for you. I promised you I would do this. How long did you sing for? Your whole life? Were you in bands? One band? Gospel, okay. Do you have any recordings of you singing? Files. I know it's under files, yeah. Is it, is it we, we can hear Reggie's voice? Yes. Yeah, man, he he must... used to sing that song when he would go and sing at different churches and stuff. That was one of his baby favorite songs. Oh, baby, play my song. <laughs> baby, play my song. <laughs> baby, play my song. <laughs> he wrote a song in April of this year. Really? And he, um, you know, he couldn't sing it. So we have a really good friend. He's a, he's been a friend to Reggie for. I don't know, 30 years, and um, he's a pastor. He actually married us, so he recorded it. You wrote the lyrics to the song? Yes, yeah. I was talking to my Jesus Let's see. just the other night. Here. And I asked him this question that was laying on my mind. I said, would anybody care if I lived or died? In a little soft voice, his words made me cry. I think to myself, as I sit here day to day, why have all my friends all gone away do they not know what to do or what to say do they not realize i need them anyway i'm 
I'm very proud of this song. It came from my heart. The toughest part is after I got sick a lot of my friends stopped coming around. Yeah. We yeah. lost a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. um, they were there right at the beginning. And then when it started to get bad, you know, going through chemo and radiation, they stopped texting, they stopped calling, coming by. You should question who your real friends are, right? That's unfortunate. Is this hell for you every day? As a, as a man of faith, I'm interested to see your answer on that. At one point I wanted to go home, but God reminds me he's not done with me yet. So your faith, your faith keeps you going. You guys coming here can help get my message out and my message of love and survival. Sure can. The greatest gift I think we can give you is telling your story so this can be prevented from somebody else. Hundreds of thousands of people are gonna see this on TV all over the country. And they'll, maybe they'll see that story and they'll go, wow, and maybe you'll save a life because of that. And that's the greatest gift that we can give, right? So that, that's why we're here today. We've been wanting this. We've been wanting to, to be able in some way, and we've not been able to think how he can tell his story and he can help other people. And that's what he wants to do. And, and you're right, doing this, it's all about that. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I got an idea. So we have our own show that we perform at. And the song that you played for me that you wrote, we're gonna fly back to Boston this weekend. We live in New Hampshire. Uh, we'll go back there and I will tell your story to our fans and I'll play this song and have the whole place stand up and listen to that song live with hundreds of people and I'll send you a video of everybody dancing to your song. That'd be cool. That's what we'll do. We had the opportunity to meet an amazing man who lives just outside of Greenville, South Carolina. His name is Reggie. Uh, we're in South Carolina. We got a message from Reggie's wife saying that he was battling cancer. He's a man of strong faith. But before he lost his ability to speak, he was a singer. But there's one thing I promised him I'd do. I said, when I get back to my home state and my crowd, I'll play that three-minute song that you wrote about God and if anyone will love him if he's gone. This is the ultimate gift we can give somebody. It's just showing that no matter where you live, no matter what you're going through, whatever trials and tribulations you're dealt, um, that humanity is strong. So Reggie, this one's for you. I promised you I would do this. So uh, everybody stand up. These are my friends over here from the Hampshire. Hi, Reggie. Sometimes you come across somebody who's just so inspiring, so tough. Reggie embodies those qualities and so many more. Hearing his story, just to think that 18 months ago, his life was normal. And now he's faced with this newfound life. To not be able to talk, not be able to eat, 
and hearing his wife say that she'll never hear him say, I love you again, puts in perspective a lot of the things that we take for granted each and every day. Reggie, to you and everyone out there who battles cancer each and every single day, my love is with you and all of our people were thinking of you. And remember, in a world full of chaos, it's important that all of us continue to show our kindness. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Reggie.